Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's further and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 24th of January. We'll be able to extend out beyond that instead of GFS and ECM Ensemble because they run around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at CFS V2 for February at the end of the video. I'll get on that for you very shortly. Just say the first video is saved at uh, well, 7 a.m. Upload. Ah, uh, but that's actually released at 6 a.m. now. I'm going to get into the habit of saying 6 a.m. rather than 7 a.m. Uh, so check out that one. And Jeremy Frey has been released as well. Please like, share, subscribe for videos. Thank you so much, dear Matt. We're going to be live streaming at 10 o'clock tonight. So I should see you uh, for our Friday night live stream later on. Right, going to start off with central in temperature. So the CT is currently now at 6.0. It's continuing gradual uh, drop. That is 2.5 degrees still, though, uh, above average. So we're still unraveling that extraordinarily hot uh, opening day that we had on uh, New Year's Day. Uh, it's been downhill ever since then, but even so, we're still like two, two and a half degrees above uh, average. That's going to come down even more, though. Uh, when it updates tomorrow, we'll be into the fives at long last. And uh, then we wait and see where we go after that. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So looking at Bristol today. So the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Bristol. We're starting off uh, above average at moment, but inversion is taking place. So although it's warmer, loft it's actually colder on the surface. Uh, more of this into next week as well, I think. So uh, again, we'll be very mild aloft next week. Probably cold on the surface with frost and fog um, risks. Into the last week of January, there's a bit of a drop in the uh, upper air temperatures that's taking place then. Some of these ensemble members are going really quite cold. But we've been seeing these teases, you know, uh, within the GFS and its ensembles for several uh, days uh, now, if not uh, several weeks, and never really comes to anything, so I wouldn't take that particularly seriously. There might be a cold snap, you know, at the end of uh, January, but uh, if it does, I suspect it will only be uh, really fleeting. Two metre temperatures looking like this, so it's going to be a bit of a tick up in the temperature uh, at the end of the weekend, at the beginning of next week, and then they'll sort of slide down again, actually, through next week with an increasing risk of frost and fog again especially later uh, into next week. Ready to the last week of January, loads of sca uh, scatch again. We've got these warm ensemble managers here. We've got cold ensemble members down there. There might be a cold snap. You know, possibly there could be at the end of uh, January. But I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't be uh, putting any money on it, to be honest. And not much happening uh, with the snow row uh, either, you know, uh, even into the end of the month. Temperature on this from the 14th, 22nd of January. It's going to be a little bit below average in the south, above average in the north. Precipitation on is drier than average in all areas. Latest wind flow map from Earth and Old School. Next shows high pressure is dominating uh, the weather once again. And uh, we'll still be dominating weather on Monday, slightly out to our west this time. So a little bit of a less cold and rather cloudy northwesterly moving in. Into uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, high pressure again is in control. Just sort of pull out to our west a little bit with the UK there. Uh, Euro starts to bring in slightly colder air from uh, the north and from the northeast. And then the high pressure of tumbles in a uh, top of the country to get into Friday. But will be cold and will bring overnight frost. So next week probably starts relatively mild and cloudy. And then it turns clearer but also colder again for the second half of the week. Very dry conditions once more though. Uh, this is Icon. Again, high pressure dominating the weather uh, now and for the foreseeable future as well. That's how we get to Friday. This time next week, you know, no real changes. High pressure is in control of weather then. Uh, GFS Midnight Run, again, the high pressure fest continues. There is a little bit of colder air just sort of slipping to our north and east uh, into the middle and second half next week. The main cold shot is in over Scandinavia, over this trough of low pressure that bring very wintry conditions again, especially with northern Europe. We're on the edges of that under this area of high pressure, uh, keeping things mainly dry uh, at that point, but it will be a little bit colder with an increased risk of frost in the second half next week. Also, high pressure might try to do something interesting by uh, Saturday, 22nd of January. It might be trying to send this ridge to Scandinavia, but of course, it's not going to do anything interesting. And instead, high pressure will just remain sat over the top of the country up to day 10. Uh, the very excellent range of high pressure that pulls out into the Atlantic. We begin to go a little bit more unsettled by month's end. About slightly cooler, a little bit of a cold snap there, but um, 
you know, not supported by any sort of blocking in any way whatsoever. So uh, just like a 24-hour little cold snap, and then we're back into my Wessies. But one thing that would happen with that is it would start turning a bit more unsettled, though. So the weather would be livening up there by the end of January with a little bit more aware of winter rain. Uh, this is how B6A is looking. Again, high pressure dominates the weather uh, now. And by the way, going to measure seal for the GFS 6Z. It stopped at daily halfway through at uh, Wednesday. So I don't know what happened. But um, anyway, this is uh, at uh, measure seal. .fr. So high pressure in control of weather now and for the foreseeable future. We do pull in some slightly colder air into that area of high pressure for the second half of next week. Might allow for a return of more frost and fog after a milder, cloudier to the first half to next week. But fundamentally, the high pressure keeps things mainly dry and fine right the way up to day 10. Again, another little sort of fleeting cooler interlude there from the northwest around the 26th of January. That's not going to amount to very much show all of the cold air that is plunging through uh, most parts of Europe. Uh, and then right at the very end of GFS 6, there we do pull in a very brief cold snap. Again, it's not supported by any sort of high latitude blocking. So just like a 24-hour cold interlude of ember air, we we'll come back in uh, around the top. Nevertheless, 30th of January, we probably will get some wintry showers to northern and eastern areas. So it would be something, you know, to talk about. Uh, GM, yeah, talking like this, if you enjoyed the video, please give a smash like button, thanks for subscribing to the channel, and uh, don't forget to tell your friends about gas as well, thank you so much for doing that, we're still trying to get to 13.1k, so please uh, give us a sub and help get us our first 100 within 13,000. Uh, GM, again, the high pressure fest goes on uh, through next week, uh, the high pressure just into trial throughout, a little bit of a cooler interlude there from the northwest by day 10. Uh, ECM, uh, again, with high pressure in control of the weather now and for the foreseeable future as well. So that's day 10, 24th of January. Uh, we're actually starting to drag up some very warm air from the Azores around the top of that high pressure. Uh, a bit of a cold plunge into Scandinavia, though. Probably still frost and fog. Maybe, if we're lucky, down in the south. Um, Temptation wise, um, to make sure a few showers on Sunday. Otherwise, not much going on there. Um, <laughs> just mainly dry. I am struggling for things to talk about, so I'm going to get this wrapped up as quickly as I can. Uh, these are options on the table. Then the ECL will sum today for day 10, gets the 24th of January. If you are saying, Met is 14 members of the ECM on Somers have a high pressure to our cell. And uh, where is low pressure to the north? That will be starting to get a little bit more unsettled for northern areas, mostly driving south. 13, including the operation run, the high pressure right in the top of the country. Uh, 10, with the high pressure just pulled out to our west, slightly around that, a little bit of a northwesterly interlude. Uh, 8, with high pressure again over and to the west of the country, mainly dry with that. And 6, again, high pressures over top of the country. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Guess 29th of January, 15 members of the ECM Assange with some mid-Atlantic regions with low pressure over Scandinavia. Winds probably in from the northwest. Mainly dry, could be a little bit cooler. That's a bit of a cold snap. Uh, 10, with high pressure still right in the top of the country. Another 10, with high pressure to the west of Ireland, low pressure to our east. That will probably bring in a northerly wind. It will be very fleeting and only, you know, last a day. Or so, but um, that's like what the GFS 6 said is showing, I suppose. Nine, uh, with low pressure north of Scotland, that's shaking things up a little bit, turning wet and windy uh, with that. And then seven, with high pressure still right in over top of the country. A lot of those options are still involving high pressure domination, even to the end of January, I have to say. Finally, CFSV2, uh, this is 700 mm bar high time today for February. Flat as a pancake, high pressure is to the south, low pressure is to the north, winds are in from the west. That's a right off February for anybody who wants cold weather. That will be like spring. Went windy, but um, will be very mild. Temperature lines are above average, unsurprisingly, uh, given the pattern. And it is a rather wetter month as well, so after a very dry January, it does go a little bit wetter in February, but would be a total write off for anyone who wants, uh, you know, anything. Uh, even uh, faintly resembling winter.
Right, if you enjoyed the video, please just smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, don't forget to friends and family to subscribe as well. And drop a comment. Let us know about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much. A uh, bit of a short one there, but it's not much to talk about. So uh, I think just best to raffle through and get it wrapped up. We're going to be back at 10 o'clock with uh, Friday Night Live. So I should see you then uh, for that. Oh, just say what's coming up tomorrow. So uh, we'll have uh, 6 a.m. upload. The EC of uh, uh, 6 weeks talking probably tomorrow as well. Uh, if that wasn't enough, we can broadcast and also attend to 14 days. So a busy old day at uh, Gals Web is tomorrow. Keep checking back for that. Uh, but for today's videos, that's all for now. We'll see you later on for the live stream. Bye for now.